Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. When you sign up for web hosting for your website, the hosting company will give you not just web access, they'll also give you email service. So you'll be able to use email with something like Microsoft Outlook or Apple Mail. But in addition to those desktop programs, they'll also give you webmail of some sort. There are many different webmail programs, but Roundcube is one of the most common, one of the most popular, and for good reason. I think it's pretty good. But before I show you how to use Roundcube, I want to show you how to set up email accounts, because you have to set them up before you can use them. The two most common control panels that a web hosting company will give you is cPanel, which you see on my screen here, and another one is called WHM, as in Web Host Manager. They're both good, and they will both work just fine for Roundcube. So what I'm going to do over here, I've already logged in. I'm going to go and click Email Accounts. So I'm logged in using my fictitious FriendlyGroundsCoffeeHouse.com. And you can see down here, I already have one account configured. If you have simple email accounts to create, it's no problem. For a small site like this, it's enough just to have first name at the domain name. If you have a lot of people, you might do something like first initial, last name, or what some companies will do is put dots in the name. You just can't have spaces. So I could go in here and configure a name something like Sarah.Jane.Smith at whatever it is, Friendly Grounds Coffee House. For password, you can put in your own. And if I just put in, let's say something stupid like password, it's going to tell me it's very weak. Well, maybe if I give it something like password with an at sign, it tells me it's OK. Or what you could do is you could click the password generator. It'll give you something really horrible. Select it, copy to the clipboard. I'll press Control C or Command C on the Mac. Confirm that I've copied it, use password, and I know that's very strong. And if I want, I could assign a mailbox quota just to make sure that people are cleaning up their mailboxes. Or I could say, well, you know, I trust everybody. I'll make them unlimited. And once you've done that, click Create Account. It'll give you a little confirmation that'll go away in a moment. And then you can see there are the accounts that you have. And that's all there is to creating email accounts. Now let's go use Roundcube. Here I've already logged into Roundcube as Joe. And let's just take a look at what's happening on the screen. On top here, you have a toolbar. Some items are grayed out because we're not ready to use them yet. Here you have mail. When you get mail coming in, let's say you're already logged in, sometimes mail will just come in automatically, or you might need to check it. You can check mail manually by clicking the Mail button here or clicking the Refresh button over there. We'll talk about address book and settings in a couple of minutes. Here I have three new messages, new meaning I haven't read them yet. And I know that I haven't read them yet because they're bolded. And I have various folders over here. Draft messages maybe that I've created and haven't sent yet. Messages that I did send if there's any junk mail. And when I delete a message, it goes into the trash first before actually being deleted completely. Down here we have options for folders. Empty them. I can compact them if they're getting too big. This is telling me if I'm using too much disk space. I can also filter messages a couple of ways. See over here where you have this drop down list. When I click this, I can see maybe messages that are unread or messages that have been deleted or with various priority. I could also go down here where it says select and I could choose also messages maybe that have been flagged or all messages. If I have a whole bunch of messages with back and forth, I could go over here and choose whether to see message threads or not. Also, because I have a total of three unread messages, well, it's pretty obvious here because I don't have a lot, but let's say you have dozens or hundreds of messages. How do you know how many are read or not? Over here, this tells you there are three unread messages. You can also sort these columns. So, for example, if I want to sort by date or by time, I can click on the date header. If I click it one way, it's in ascending order. If I click it again, it's in descending order. The same for size from I can do it alphabetically in ascending order, alphabetically in descending order. Also, you can search messages. To search, click in this box, and you could type a word or a phrase or just about anything you want to search for. And by default, it'll search everything in all the messages. If you want, you can limit the search by clicking this little drop down and choosing, well, maybe you just want to search the subject of the messages or just the body or just who it's from. If you choose entire message, 
That'll just be everything. And then just press enter. And then it finds however many messages have that word or phrase. So the others aren't deleted, they're just hidden. And I could double click it and I can see, oh yeah, there's that word that I searched for. And when I'm done, I could click the little mail button or click the round cube logo and I'm back here and you notice that search is over. If I'm searching for something, I'll just use the same word, and I decide, oh, you know, I really don't want to search after all, I can click this little X here, and also that deletes the search. Okay, so how do we read an email already? Well, I thought you'd never ask. One way is you can click down over here in the lower right corner, this little button for preview window. Right now I don't have any messages selected, so there's nothing to preview, but let's say if I just click one, then I can see a preview. I could also adjust the height of the screen. You see right now the mouse pointer is this little two-headed arrow, so I can adjust the height up or down. Also because I have this message selected, now this toolbar has come alive. So let's say I want to reply. I can reply to a message by clicking the reply button there, or I can click this reply button over here. I can reply to all by clicking this guy over here, the second one, or reply to all over there. I can forward a message with that forward button or with that forward button. If I want to pop out this message in a new window, maybe it's very long, I can click this button over here. And if I want to see message headers, I can click this button here. And that's useful if you need to do any debugging or if you're working with spam. Let me just close that up. Because I've clicked this message and I've read it, you notice that the header is no longer bolded. There is also another way that you could read messages. Let me close this preview pane. I'll click this little button here. And that is you can double click a message. So let's say the second one here, I'll double click it. And now you notice the entire window, all of those messages get replaced. And I see just this message itself. And I could go forward and backward through the list of messages by clicking the back and forward buttons. Now I have only one unread message. So that's changed to one. Now if I want to get back to the message list, I could click either this mail button or I could click the round cube logo. And now I'm back to the message list. Now let's say I read one of these messages, but I really want to mark that as unread so that I can come back to it later. I'll remember to come back to it later. I'll just select a message and over here where it says mark, I'll click that and now I can mark it as unread. And you notice it's bolded again. I have a number two there. Let's say I want to create an email message rather than just replying to one. I'll click over here on this compose button in the upper left corner. And now it tells me who it's being sent from. I'm logged in as Joe, so it has Joe's name and email address. I can type in who I'm sending the message to. If I want to carbon copy someone, I can add CC and type in a name. I could also add a BCC, a blind carbon copy, clicking over here. And then just a subject. And then you can type in your message. I said that typing in email addresses is one way of getting people's addresses in there. But another way is you can use an address book. Now, I don't have any addresses in here yet. I'll show you how to do that. But you could select names from this address book. If I want to send a file attachment, I could go over here and click attach a file. And then once I find the file I want, I can just double click it. Confirm, yes, that's the one I want. Click Upload, and now you see it's attached. By the way, you notice I don't have an email signature below this. I'll show you in a minute how we can go and create that. And once you're done creating the message, you can click Send. I'm not actually going to do that in this case, because these are bogus email addresses. I'm just going to cancel. Now, if I wanted to, I could click Save, and that would save this message in drafts. If I click Cancel, I simply confirm it, and... Okay, it's gone and I'm back to where I was. So let me show you how you can set up an address book. Up here in the upper right corner, we have this little address book button. I'll click that. So in here, in addition to creating contacts, I can also create subgroups. See over here under groups, it shows personal addresses. Maybe I want to have one group for golfing buddies, another one for business associates and so on. So what I could do here is click this little plus sign and now I can create a subgroup called like golfing buddies and press enter and there it is. So I can create as many as I want. If I decide that I want to remove one of them, I can select it, click this little gear icon here. I could rename it, I can delete it. I'll go back here to personal addresses. Now to create a contact, 
down over here, you see we have the contacts pane down at the bottom. I'll click plus and now have a contact form. So I could type in a person's name. If I have a picture of them, I can click over here and add and put in a picture. And then down here, I can put in their email addresses. And a person can have more than just one email address. You can click here and have work and other. And you have all sorts of other info. I'll just scroll down. Address, you could add fields if you want. You could go here for personal information and just general notes. And then once you've checked everything over and you're satisfied, go down here on bottom and click Save. And the contact is saved. And you could add as many as you want. If you want to delete someone, you simply select them and click the little trash can button. If you want to modify a record, once the record is up, click Edit Contact, and you're right back to where you were. And then once you're done, you could either save or cancel. When you're done creating contacts, you can, just like before, click the little mail button here, or click the round cube logo, and now you're back at the main screen. I also want to show you how you can change some settings. Now, there's too many settings for me to show you every single one, but the three settings that you're probably most interested in is... Let's say you're on a web page and you click an email address. How do you make RoundCube come up? How do you get the ability to format messages with different fonts and bold and all that? And also, how do you create an email signature? I mentioned that earlier. So all of the settings you get to up here in the upper right corner, you see the little gear icon, click settings. And that brings us into the main settings screen. Now you see there's three main categories and then there are different sections here. First, I want to show you how you could make RoundCube come up when you click an email address. Go over here and click User Interface. And see here you could change time and all that. But I'm going to scroll down. And you see over here at the very bottom where it says Browser Options, it says Register Protocol Handler. So you click that. I'm not actually going to do that because I don't want to interfere with other things happening on this machine. But you could click that and then click Save. Keep in mind, this is for this particular computer only. This isn't for all of RoundCube. So let's say if you use email sometimes on this machine and other times on other machines, on each machine you're using, you're going to have to do this one separately. Okay, so let's say when you're creating or replying to email messages, you want to be able to format them. What we do over here, we go over to composing messages. And you see over here where it says compose HTML messages. Click that drop down and just choose always. And then you'll always be able to apply formatting. Now, since we're on the screen, let me scroll down to the bottom here. And when you create signatures, there's actually two parts of it. One part is entering the signature itself, but the other part, and that's in this screen, is deciding, do you really want to include the signature? I'm not really sure why they put this on two different screens, but over here it says automatically add signature. You could click here and choose you know, always or new messages only, things like that. And this checkbox is handy to remove the original signature from a message when you reply. And then once you've done that, click Save. Now let's actually create the signature. Now to create the signature, that's not anywhere here. That's over here. You see where it says Settings. We go and choose Identities. Now the idea behind Identities is, let's say mostly you're using this for work, but sometimes you have a special project that you're doing and you want an identity for that, or after hours, you're a crime-fighting superhero, and you don't want anybody to know that you're really Clark Kent. So you could go down here, click the plus sign, and create an identity. I'm just going to stick with this one here. The reason that signatures are here is that each identity can have its own signature. So I'm going to click in here and type a signature, but I want this to be a formatted HTML signature. So before I even type anything, I'm going to click that little checkbox there. So I'll just type something in. And I'll format it, select it, make it bold. I'll give it maybe a coffee-ish looking color. Okay, that's nice. And then once you're done formatting, you can click Save. It's saved gives you a little message that it's saved. Now to get back to the main screen, just like before, you could click the little mail button or click the round cube logo. Now that we have the signature, let's go and use it. We'll create a message. Click over here, Compose. There's your signature, and you notice there's a little dividing line, and you can type in. I'm not actually going to send this, just want you to see the signature, so I'll click Cancel. Click OK, and I'm back on the main screen. Once you're done, rather than just closing the web page, it's probably a good idea to log out. 
So you can click the log out button and then close the tab or close out of the web browser. So you can see why web hosting companies tend to provide RoundCube to their customers. It's straightforward and it does most of what most people will need. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Again, my name is Bob Flisser for Tots Plus, and thanks a lot for watching.